What's up guys and welcome back to my channel. My name is Lily and this is where I'm documenting my real estate investing journey and bring you guys along with me. I know today this is going to be kind of a fun different video for the channel where I'm going to be unboxing my new camera and some other gear that I've gotten to invest back in the channel and make better content for you guys. But I'm also going to pair that with a Q&A from some questions that I recently got over on um, an Instagram poll. So I'll be answering those questions for you guys, going through some of my new gear and basically just hanging out with you today. So let's open up some of these boxes, answer some of these questions and get into it. If you're not already following me on Instagram, definitely head over to at Lily Invests on IG. I go live every Wednesday at 6.20 p.m. Central Time. And I also just like do random Q&As and just random lives while I'm out at different properties and all that good stuff. So if you want to connect with me there daily, definitely go over and join. That's at Lily Invests on Instagram. Now, when I first started this channel, I didn't have any fancy gear. It was just me in my room with my iPhone filming. And for some lighting, I used a lamp that I stole from my parents' house. And as the channel grows and my wholesaling business has gotten off the ground, I want to take this opportunity to really say thank you to you guys and invest in some better gear for the camera, for the visuals to be better, as well as a mic for the audio to be better. So this is the last video that I'll be filming on my iPhone. We're going to miss you iPhone videos, but I'm excited to invest in some new gear and share this process with you guys and also get a chance to answer some of your questions. By the way, if you've never been to my channel before, my name is Lily. This is where I document my real estate investing journey and bring you guys along with me. So if you've gotten interested in real estate investing and financial freedom, and you really just want some transparent, honest content from the perspective of another beginner, definitely make sure to subscribe. And if you want to support the channel, you know what to do. Turn that like button blue. All right, so let's go to a question first and then we'll open up the first piece of gear. So this is a really good question. It says, what's the most accurate way to justify your low offer like can you use arv you know to justify your low offer and this is really good because a lot of times when you're wholesaling or when you're investing in real estate you're looking for a deal so you're looking to get a property for as low as you can and somebody who's selling is looking to sell their house oftentimes for as much as they can now if it's a wholesale deal that property should already be in some type of distress whether it's physical distress that the property is in or it's like um, the seller is in some type of distress they need to move quickly or they have a vacant house that's just sitting there and so they're motivated so that's already going to bring the prices down a little bit but if you still are finding that you need to justify your ARV or justify your low offer something that I have used in kind of a, what I think this person is asking is I have used that ARV right if I have a property that just say it could sell for a hundred thousand dollars if it was all fixed up right in its current condition it can't sell for a hundred thousand dollars and so I could say hey, I understand, you know, you guys want to get as much out of the property as you can. We're looking at it in, as an investment. And so we're going to put X amount of dollars into it in terms of rehab. And we're going to be able to sell it for $100,000 on the back end. And then you can pair that with whatever you think your rehab estimate is. And really, I think when you lay it out like that, depending on how good of a relationship you've built with the seller or with the agent, it can possibly help you take it away from emotions between the two of you and more so just like, hey, we could sell it for this much. We've got to put this much into it. We need to make this much for our time. This is how much we need to buy it for. Is that the right thing to do in every single situation? I don't know. But I do think that depending on the relationship you've built with the real estate agent or the seller, and if they're asking you to justify your low price, stick to the numbers. What can we sell it for? This is how much it's going to take us to um, to rehab it, you know, plus our fees, et cetera, et cetera. That might help you. So first thing we're going to unbox is actually... I believe this is a new microphone. So the onboard mic for this camera, and I'm, this is not a tech review, but the onboard mic for this camera, I believe is just not the best, right? It's made for, uh, it's made for visuals, not, you know, audio. So I went ahead and got a camera. I'm gonna use my brother's knife to cut this open and hopefully not cut myself. My mom's gonna watch this and be like, be more careful. I'm just gonna rip it, there we go. going with the video mic pro plus and this is because i wanted to invest in the best gear that i could possibly find so that my channel is kind of set to go technology gets better so quickly i didn't want to buy something that was put out like 
you know, a couple of years ago and then in another year it's going to be outdated and I have to update again. I want to just invest once in the high quality stuff and then hopefully I'll be able to use it for a very long time. So I'm really excited about this. Let's, uh, let's open her up. Let me see here. Another question. Do I need a lawyer or can everything be done by myself? This is a great question because lawyers are expensive, but they're expensive for a reason. So I'm not a lawyer, so this isn't legal advice. Oh, goodness. But I'll tell you guys kind of what I did get a lawyer for and what I did not. First, so cool. First, I did not get a lawyer for setting up an LLC or anything like that. As of right now, I'm wholesaling in my personal name. Um, one of my plans is to get an LLC set up and document that this is really hard to open. This is hard to concentrate to answer questions and open stuff at the same time. Okay. One of my plans is to get an LLC and document that journey for you guys. But I didn't want to, you know, kind of give myself the excuse of waiting until I had an LLC set up to start wholesaling. So I just go into contract in my personal name and I sign that contract to uh, my cash buyer out of my personal name. The check comes into my personal name and I have a separate account again in my personal name that I deposit my assignment check into. Now, I know some people do like to set up their LLC for tax purposes and all of that. I was just like, let me just dive in and actually get a deal first and like prove to myself that I can do this and I can make this happen before I go into kind of getting bogged down with trying to save a little bit on taxes. So that's my perspective. Now, what I did get a lawyer for is to review my contracts. So when you're wholesaling, you're gonna need multiple types of contracts. This is, this looks like a USB, possibly to charge the camera. This isn't a camera, to charge the, the mic. Um, so that's cool. Battery. It's actually really light, much lighter than I expected. Okay, so this cord goes to from the camera to my, uh, from the mic to my camera, but I actually got a longer one just because I'm gonna have this on a boom pole to, to be closer to my mouth and get better quality. So I also did get an extra mic there. Very cool. So what I did get a little for, let's put this down gently, I won't throw it. What I did get a lawyer for was looking over my contracts because you're going to need to have um, a purchase and sale agreement. If you're wholesaling with a real estate agent, they will have a purchase and sale agreement for you. But if you're wholesaling off market, you're going to need a purchase and sale agreement. You're going to need an assignment contract on every deal you do unless you have the cash to buy it yourself and you're not assigning it. But if you're assigning it to an end buyer, you're going to need an assignment contract. And you're possibly going to need a cancellation contract. Again, if you're wholesaling on market, the real estate agent will send you the cancellation contract. But if there's no agent involved, it's just you and the seller, you're going to need to have the contracts. The seller's not going to have those contracts. So I got those contracts from a myriad of different sources on the internet and basically compiled them into what I thought made sense, compared them with like my state official contracts um, that the real estate agents give. Um, and then I had a lawyer look over them and give me their feedback. So I thought that was a good investment into my business because now I can trust my contracts for my purposes in my state. And it just, you know, it gives me some peace of mind. So I think for you, it's like, what are you worried about that you want a lawyer to give you input on? And then just consider it an investment in your business because it really can kind of cover your butt on the front end rather than trying to get a lawyer to get you out of something, a bad situation on the back end. All right, next up. I believe this is the Gorilla Pod for the camera. Also, I'm most excited about the camera, so we're gonna save that one for last. Let's look up another question. Okay, so here's one. Do you invest in mobile homes? Um, I have never invested in a mobile home. If, though, I saw a mobile home for sale in distressed condition, I would do the same exact thing. I would figure out what do mobile homes in fixed up condition sell for, how much is it possibly going to take to fix this one up, and then I would find an end buyer and wholesale to them. Now, I know that there are other channels here on YouTube that focus more on mobile homes. I've never done one before, um, but people make money wholesaling or flipping anything. And I think it's just about picking something and getting really good at it. And that's why I'm like, I'm not going to run out and try to find a mobile home to invest in and then try to find an apartment and then try to find a single family and all these different things. It's like stick to one thing and get really good at it. When you get really good at it, then move on to another. Also, I know some markets have more mobile homes than they do 
um, just like normal single family houses that are kind of set to be wholesaled. So it could really just depend on the market. All right. stuck it's like really stuck okay. okay that wasn't as exciting as i thought because it's still covered in paper all right let's try this again question is earnest money out of pocket yes earnest money is out of pocket um you can check out this video i did right here about earnest money i just really want to use this knife but i feel like i don't have to um earnest money is out of pocket earnest money is what you put down when you go under contract um and the amount of earnest money depends on the situation how much is the house selling for is the house being sold on market or off market um, I talk about it in depth in that video, but what you should know is that earnest money is put down out of pocket um, to go under contract, right? To make that contract official. And I will kind of push this into a second question and talk about both. And that is, should you market properties before you have them under contract? Meaning you don't actually have the contract on a property, but should you put it out there to market before you have a before you actually have the contract? Should you go try to find a cash buyer? My answer is no. And that's because one, I don't know the legality of that. And two, I wanna do repeat business with the best cash buyers in my market. And so I want them to trust me and to know if I say that I have a property um, that I want to assign to them, I want them to know and trust that I have the contract on it and everything is above board and you know, just like there's not gonna be any issues. Because what if you say, hey, I've got this contract, you know, that I'm trying to sell to somebody for 50K and somebody says, okay, yes, I'll take it. And you go back and you offer the seller 40K, hoping to make a 10K wholesale fee and they don't accept. Well, now you've gotta go back to your cash buyer and either make up an excuse or tell them the truth or whatnot. And it just isn't the greatest start to a business relationship. So I say that because some people will do that in the hopes that they can get the cash buyer to put down earnest money for them because your cash buyer will put down earnest money too. Again, link, link to this video, but your cash buyer will put down earnest money too, but you really need to have the contract, in my opinion, on that property before you market it to your cash buyer so that everything is above board. If you don't have the, mon the earnest money, save up as much as you can and offer what you can, right? And then that video also talks about how to make sure that you don't lose your earnest money and that you get... Um, a due diligence period that protects you in case you need to cancel the contract. This is, this weighs more than the mic. This is like hefty. So cool. This is dope. It tells you when it's level. This is dope. I really know what this is. Push this. Oh, that slides out. That's cool. And then you can screw that into the bottom of your camera and snap it back on. Very cool. Doesn't tell me what this is for. Anybody know what this is for? Let me know in the comments. All right, next question. Let's see. Mm, are title companies and escrow companies the same thing? Yes, I believe so. Um, that's a good question to Google. Another good thing to know specifically for your market is are you in a title company state or are you in a lawyer state? Because in different states, different um, entities handle the buying and selling of properties. So you may need to look up your state and you may need to call an attorney that closes properties and ask them if they handle wholesale deals or assignments of contract or you may need to call a title company. It differs by state, so just Google your state and figure out if you're with a title company or um, an attorney company. And yes, the title company or the attorney will open up escrow, which is just the process of getting everything prepared to purchase the property. What do I send to my cash buyers? Or what do I send after, okay, what do I send to my buyers after contracting the property? Really good question. This is the, what is this called? 
the SD card. Um, so this is the card, the memory card for the camera. So put that over here. This is just an adapter, so it works with my laptop. And then I think I got this just in case my camera doesn't fit directly onto this. I think that's why I got this. So let's see. All right, let's answer this question first. Um, after I get a contract, I send what I call just like a property info packet to my cash buyers, something I just put together on Google Drive. And basically I lay out all of the information about the property, what I want for it, what I think the ARV is, um, what condition it's in, everything that I know about the property. And then I also, in that Google Drive folder, put pictures and a video walkthrough so I can just send the link to my buyers and they can check everything out and let me know if they wanna see the property. It has my contact information in there. And yeah, I just send out that link. Um, I don't like post that link anywhere. I post basic information about the property or I email basic information about the property and the buyers who are interested will get back to me and I'll get them the link. All right, I'm like opening this with no circumstance. This is, this is a big deal. Instruction manual. Camera strap. Battery charger. Battery. Lens. This is exciting. Oh, so cool. This is so cool. I'm not even like a camera person or a tech person, but just like, you know, like making this investment. This is dope. All right, let me get you guys another question real quick. Um, so if it's a 30 day close, do you receive a check on the 30th day or before? Yep, you receive your check the day of closing, or I mean, you can go get it the day after. I'll go get mine the day, um, but you can get your check the day of closing and you can get it wired to you. You can go pick it up. They can mail it to you. Um, so yeah, 30 days. If your closing is 30 days. If it's more, then you get it whenever it closes. Okay, we're going to do more questions, but this is a big moment right now. I'm not going to throw this box. i got to be respectful to this box. Wow. Here we go. Let me not be clumsy right now. This is exciting. I don't know how to use this, but this is exciting. Put the lens in. This is dope. It's got a flip out screen that I believe so turn so I can see myself. This is so cool, guys. I'm really excited about this. Thank you guys for supporting me and, and making me able to make this happen. So let me see if this is correct. So I can actually use this thing. Oh, it is. Okay, great. So that goes on there. Perfect. And let's see. <laughs> That's dope. And then I'll be able to do that and that. That's super cool. All right, dope. All right, here we go. Another question. We're just gonna sit this right here to look pretty. Get you straightened out, little buddy. I'll figure out how to use this later off camera, but this is exciting. I didn't even need this knife. It just looks cool. I have to give it back to my brother. He told me how to close it. I don't remember. Uh, there we go. Okay. So, is working off the MLS my main way of finding deals right now? And it is because 
there are plenty of distressed properties that come on the market in the area that I'm looking in. Um, Tulsa is not even like a big city, but um, investing in Tulsa and the surrounding areas means that there are plenty of distressed properties that come on market. I've gotten good at working with real estate agents and I've created some relationships with real estate agents. And so when they get a property with the criteria that I'm looking for, they send it to me because they know that you know, I'm looking for those type of properties. They know that they can get extra commission with me. Um, I'll talk about extra commission and double dipping and all that in another video. So definitely subscribe for that. Um, but yeah, it's just simple. Um, there's plenty of them. And although the margins might be slightly smaller, they're free leads. And so if you think about it, I know some people, um, there's some wholesalers here on YouTube who talk about how much money they spend um, per month, per week on leads and people are spending thousands of dollars like i know on the low end some people are spending like two thousand dollars a month on leads and so those deals take a little bit longer and and this is for off market right like if they're mailing or text message blasting or whatever but those deals take a little bit longer and they cost more money to get those deals in the door and so for me i just like the speed of on market deals right like i can have an offer accepted the day that i make an offer and assigned and closed 30 days later versus following up with someone for four or five, six months if it's an off-market deal and my leads are free. So that's just my personal perspective. I think it's a great way to start with free leads. And then if you want to invest some of your assignment fees back into your business and start doing mailers or text message blasting or cold calling lists that you skip trace, that's all great. But I definitely think for beginners, if you're starting out with not a ton of money and you want to practice and get your systems in place, it makes a lot of sense to use those free leads on the MLS's practice. So someone here asked, do I have scripts for motivated sellers? And I actually don't really talk to sellers. I talk with their real estate agent who is representing them. And I do have phone scripts for you guys. Free resources are in my bio. And that just tells you what I say to real estate agents when I call them and let them know I want to buy their property and how I make sure I have no problem assigning that property for a fee at the end of the day. You can check out this video right here for talking to agents, but you'll also get the free resources in the link in my bio. And here's another good question. Do you have a go to channel podcast or book? So there are tons of good resources out there. And this is just how I got started was just diving into a lot of this information. And so I'll put some um, books and podcasts and audiobooks and all of that good stuff in the description for you guys but one thing that comes to mind right away is the richest man in babylon like this is like a story it's not just you know an educational book which those are great right they're jam-packed with information that you need to learn but the richest man in babylon is really a story it's a tale and it teaches a lesson through the story and i think that's oftentimes the best way that we like to learn. And so I'm not going to give away anything about the story. It's a super quick read. Like you could finish this in just like one sitting. Um, but it teaches really good lessons. And I try to remember those lessons as I build out my business. Um, so yeah, that's all I'll say about it. But I definitely recommend you guys go read The Richest Man in Babylon. I'll link to it for you in the description below, as well as all of my other book suggestions. And if you want to submit questions, definitely follow me over on Instagram at Lily Invest. I also have a link that I'll put in the bio to a survey on my website where you can just tell me a little bit more about what type of content you're looking for, how I might help you. And if you want to take advantage of some mentorship opportunities to work directly with me. So I'll put all those links in the description for you guys. Thank you so much for making this possible for me to invest in this gear, invest back in this channel to continue bringing you guys really what I hope is the most authentic, transparent content from a beginner's perspective that you'll find anywhere on these here internets. So thanks for making this happen. Thanks for being in this journey with me, guys. I truly, truly do appreciate each and every one of you. It's crazy to think that there are people watching this video, um, but I really appreciate it. And as always, I'm committed to posting three videos a week for you guys, high value content. Until next time, go check out some of the links in the description. Definitely follow me on Instagram. And as always, thank you so much for watching.